going on, guys? So today we're talking about the best selling cards under $5 or less the Yu Gi Oh! Penny Stock Market Watch. I um, moved into a new place, so that's exciting. That's why there's no video last Friday. Um, but let's just jump right into it. Um, and there's still a Penny Stock video, that's the main thing, right? Um, Jeez. So the top seven cards, assuming it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I don't actually know. Um, the top seven cards are all from Battles of Legends, Monsters Revenge. Um, and I, 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 you know, we'll check in on the the um, market watch as well. But I'd assume it's not like that for like over five dollars, right? Um, this is a very good like casual budget players um, set. Uh, you know, I mean, the the engages are under five, super polys are under three, masquerades are under three, water enchanters is under three, danger nessie is under three, so a lot of really good stuff there um, that I certainly uh, think, you know, Battles of Legends, Monsters Revenge, I do just kind of want to double check it to see what the overall um, set is at, it says at 66, which I believe that's south of where it was just last week even um yep yep because it was uh right around here last week and now it's still going down so if you want to keep waiting it out maybe see you know what what, what if it hits 60 right if it hits 60 i i definitely think i'll pick up a a a pack of it and just see how crazy we can get with it but um i mean because here's another two right here um that's all just in the top 10 or top 12 really um terraforming great reprint and they're all secret rares too so um it might be a budget set for a while, but, like, if you're missing certain cards, you know, you like to see, like, a Baron be reprinted in it. But, like I said, if you're missing certain cards, you know, Battles of Legends, Monsters, Revenge is fantastic. Um, Astral, Nibiru, nothing crazy crazy there. More Battles of Legends, Monsters, Revenge. Um, Evenly Mash is going down, which is interesting. Um... I mean, it's overall price fluctuation over the last six months, uh, which is just as long as it's been out. Uh, it's it's low as five as three eighty, it's high as five sixty. So that two dollar fluctuation is kind of a lot, but it's really not that much over the course of six months. And just over the last month, it's only fluctuated sixty cents. Um, and right now, it's kind of lingering on the. Uh, I mean, like this is pretty good value. I feel like. Um, for evenly matched, um, it's just an absolutely insane card. And if you look, it's being ran in a lot of very good decks. I've never liked the card because it skips the battle phase. Um, you know, it's 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 a similar to Soul Charge there, but Soul Charge you know gives you advantage uh, where evenly matched does also give you advantage. Um, but it doesn't. It it allows your opponent. To control what advantage you get. That's why I, don't, I personally don't like the card. Um, but I know a lot of people do. Um, and hey, we, everybody has different play styles. So just because I don't like the card. Doesn't mean that it's a bad card for every single person. Um, I did want to look at this card real quick. Uh, old Golden Rule. Um, this is, you know, upon looking at it uh, more than a couple of, more than one time. Um, I've noticed like, this is a really good card. Um, and Crystal Beast with cards like Conclave. Let's actually just take a look uh, at, at Crystal Beast real quick. Because Crystal Beast. That's not how you spell Beast. Uh, Crystal Beast has a lot of like really interesting cards. I'll say that. Um, obviously, you have the advanced Crystal stuff um, that just came out. Um, you have. Um, you know, Sapphire Pegasus is really good. This is a really good card. Um, Crystal Release um, is is not the best, but is is not terrible either. Um, if we keep going, um, Crystal Counter is not very good. Uh, Crystal Pair, Crystal Beacon isn't terrible. Crystal Beacon is actually a pretty solid card for what it can do. Um, there's another one too that I'm trying to get to see if we can stumble upon it. Um, I mean, there's just so much. Crystal Rigeki's okay. Crystal Promise isn't really that good. Um, and 
we are in magic cards now. Um, we'll just go to here. Uh, that's crazy that you can get this structure deck for seven dollars. I would definitely consider picking up this structure deck um, for seven dollars because at the very least, like, okay, I've had this structure deck, you know, just taking up space in um, my um, closet for quite some time. Um, this, I think it's Mechanized Madness, right? That's the uh, second one this card came out in. Yes. Um, and it's like $9 market price of 13. Yeah, I was gonna, I don't know what this $9 is. Yeah, this is $9 a misnomer. So it's like 15 bucks. And this is a structure deck that um, while Machina is pretty solid, um, Infotrack Machina is a little better. Um, and there's really just like a couple of chase cards in here, like Cosmic, Citadel, Fortress, Avarice, Strike, um, Birdman, uh, now that it came off the ban list, uh, but it's not really that good. And that's really it, you know? Whereas we look at this Crystal Beast structure deck. Uh, first off, it's Crystal Beast. Everybody loves Crystal Beast, right? But second off, more importantly, Ghost Bell, Ash Blossom, Foolish Goods, D-Shifter, Cosmic. I know the bells or the shifters and the ashes aren't as good as they used to be. Um, or, or, you know, maybe because of all the reprints they have, their value has gone down. But there's a lot of potential value. And this is a card I was talking about. Crystal Miracle is really good. Um, and, and that's the thing, too. Like, Crystal Beast isn't that bad of a strategy. Just, like, pure Crystal Beast where you got Rainbow Bridge um, that has some interesting interactions. Obviously, you have the double summon. Um, you, you know, you have the double bounce um, where you bounce for yourself, bounce for your opponent. Uh, Crystal Bond is a free plus one. It's actually insane. This card is actually insane. Awakening is really good. Um, I mean, honestly, Rainbow Dragon is not terrible. The extra deck monsters aren't bad. Conclave is really good. So I would just be on the lookout for Crystal Beast uh, stuff taking off, especially when I see, if you know, we go back far enough, um, a card like this um, that just helps the deck in such a fantastic way. Um, because, you know, one of the biggest plays this deck has um, is the uh, Carbuncle Summon for four, right? Essentially, you know, people, a lot of people call it, like, the Soul Charge of the deck, and it really can do that. Um, like, this is just, like, it's it's just so crazy how good um, this card is uh, as, and as an equip spell. Um, and for less than a dollar... I would definitely consider just picking up Crystal Beast because um, it isn't. I mean, I personally like the archetype. I, I like messing around with Crystal Beast, you know, and and you know, obviously it's not the most meta-defining deck right now, um, but it can do some pretty interesting things. Um, I think I saw a top of like a 50-man locals, which isn't bad. Like, obviously it's not good, but like it isn't that terrible either. Um, that's crazy. I think D Fisher just went down, right? I think it was D Fisher was a little higher. Um, D Fisher is just not as good as I thought it was going to be, which is unfortunate. Like this card got power crap. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I would steer clear of all copies. I mean, honestly, in retrospect, um, most D Fishers are over a dollar, and this one's seventy five cents or less. Um, yeah, seventy cents. Is pretty nice um i mean this has 58 copies at 82 cents um but you know we can go back and you know do this as well where like you know if we get all of these um and hit the right belt oh, macrocosmos is here too um i have three things in my cart i think it's from last last week yeah this sky striker stuff and dark ran um um but when we look at D Fissure, uh, you know, you can buy, how many was it? 58 copies uh, for less than 50 bucks. And if it hits a dollar, you know, that's 58 bucks, right? Like that's, you know, lunch is on you type thing. Maybe at Wendy's uh, for a biggie bag, but like still, it's still um, not too bad. And, and if you can scale that, uh, you can do really, really well. Um, I, I could definitely see this card going up in value, but that it's just really more that version of that card not d fissure d fissure is just not a very good card uh unfortunately it's, it's literally just been power crap like just being able just banishing your opponent's monsters from the graveyard just doesn't do what it used to um 
it is what it is. I'm curious about this card too because it's got this in its name. I mean, it's a flame wingman, right? Um, is it good though? Uh, special summon. You can add one card with favorite in its name for your deck or graveyard. You can tribute this card that was fusion summoned using a normal monster as material to special summon a level 7 or lower elemental hero monster from your deck that cannot be normal summoned or set. What is the target for that? <laughs> Ooh, we, um, I haven't the fondest idea what the target is for that. Um, so I'm going to actually take a pause and come right back. I actually found two targets for this. Uh, and the reason why like this is relevant um, is because the value of this card is truly as good, especially because like you can summon this off of, I'm pretty sure you can summon this off of Neos Fusion. I'm not sure. But anyway, the value of this card is these targets, right? And this target, right? Um, so that's why it's important um, if you're wondering like whether or not to invest in a card to figure out like, like, like to really do your um, due diligence, really do your research to see what are the favorite cards. And I'm not looking this up, but I'm gonna look up this because I was I, I don't even I didn't even know that there were elements of your monsters that couldn't be special that couldn't be normal summoner set. Uh, but there are actually two. Um, and that's why I just skipped ahead because there's so many elements of hero monsters. But uh, must be special summon rules. But it's special. Each time this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent, gains 200 attack, and loses 200 defense. Um, and your opponent can only target elemental hero poison rose for attacks. So that's really bad. Um, Neo Bubble Man says that um, destroy an opponent's monster that battles this card at the end of the damage step, which isn't like garbage but i don't think you would ever summon this card in replacement of this card um so tldr is not a good card <laughs> essentially is what i've been trying to get at but i couldn't make that assessment without knowing you know like what it cards it searches and different things like that um we're actually gonna go to the second page because there's just so much monstrous revenge wandering around a second ash blossom is interesting another um monstrous revenge card this is a generic level six uh level six is an interesting level for synchro monsters like sardis charge warrior uh good old orient dragon um coral dragon is probably the most well-known one um but this card's interesting too um you can apply this based on uh, how many materials you used or based on the levels you used one to five, destroy one of the card on the field. Two to four, draw a card. Uh, three and three, uh, treat this card as a tuner. That is really good. That is really fantastic. Um, I, I can't think off the top of my head what deck would use this though. Um, but I, I, you know, I mean, obviously there's like the uh, Infernoble Warrior deck that might get some use out of this. Uh, Synchron has a lot of like very low level monsters uh, and it does a lot of climbing um, so this could definitely be a really solid card to just like mess around with I feel like this card has like a lot of potential for sure um, a lot of potential but I don't, I'm not certain how high end potential um, I guess we can look at this card too while we're at it my, this is um, a little different I guess I think D Fisher also got reprinted in the speed duel um duels of the shadows i think maybe actually not i don't think d fissure did uh the the thing was like macrocosmos and d fissure kind of get clumped together a lot um but especially now that they're both back at three and d shifter is a card um you really have to take a look at the differences because macrocosmos is a trap d fissure is a spell macrocosmos though says um any card sent to the graveyard is banished instead. So that's 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 spells, that's traps. That's a lot better than just monsters, right? Um, also, it does summon this, um, <laughs> which is uh, the sun god in Greek mythology. Okay. Um, didn't know that. <laughs> I learned something new every day. Uh, this card 
yeah, and this is like its own little arc type. I don't know. Um, I, you know, when you, you play the game for a long enough time, you start to stumble upon the Helios archetype. <laughs> That's a very interesting thing. But anyway, you take a look just like back in May, right? Um, at regional qualifier middle lap, it was a top eight deck profile was running Macrocosmos, and the reason why that's relevant uh, in this discussion is because we were just talking about Dimension Fissure, right? Um, whether or not it's goodbye, Macrocosmos is getting played over Dimension Fissure, right? So, uh, and I think it's a little bit more expensive. I think like the D Fissures was thirty cents, um, but the interesting thing is though, um, D Fissure had a lot of copies over a dollar. Macrocosmos does not, right? So from a playing standpoint, I think Macrocosmos is a little better. But from a purchasing standpoint, I actually think Macrocosmos is a little bit worse. Um, but the, the Monsters Revenge version, because it is the cheapest version, definitely has a lot of potential, um, without a doubt. Um, this is the uh, card that goes with that. Um, a Rise Heart, goodness gracious. I mean, this card is kind of like, it was never like stupid expensive right but like three dollars 350 and keep in mind too like the other card uh none of you none of you shangri-la is a generic level seven so assuming konami because like, they might hit a rise heart right but assuming and this is only 32 cents assuming konami doesn't run into like doesn't ban this archetype entirely right you could potentially use this in a non cash tier deck like I, I know like the interaction is not 100% like the easiest right but like especially with Fenrir existing and like being a really good card and that's the thing like I said like if Fenrir gets hit or Izar gets hit you know this is all gonna be pie in the sky stupid idea um, but like you know, really just even, like, a card like um, the regular Rise Heart, um, you know, is a warrior, is a fire, um, just being able to banish an opponent's card face down uh, is pretty solid, and you can use this to make a Rise Heart. Um, I, 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 don't, I can't think of something off the top of my head that, like, can just easily make this card other than Cash Tira. But it isn't like super duper restrictive to where it's like you can only summon cast tier cards when you summon that card. And it is a really good card, right? That that card's a big reason why Macrocosmos and D Fissure aren't that good. And like cards like Dark Law and the fact that like we can use monsters with three thousand attack to banish all of our opponents' cards, right? Instead. Um let's talk about this card. We've never talked about this card. Oh my goodness. Epsilon is worth money. You could two dollars for a damaged epsilon. I mean, what I will say, I never liked gamma, uh, but gamma's interaction with sprite did kind of merit it to get limited, especially because there are certain circumstances where gamma's just crazy. Gamma gets a lot better if you're running another side frame card. And I've noticed like a lot of people are starting to do that um, with the one that negates spells. I forget the one that negates spells. Um, and now we see Epsilon, right? Because Labyrinth is starting to be like a really popular deck and like just like, oh, like what am I supposed to do if my opponent activates Eradicator, right? Fire frame gear Epsilon, <laughs> right? So um, I figured it did something over the weekend for higher. Sam Super Samurai makes a lot of sense actually to run this card. Um, so yeah, this could be, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily speaking of FOMO. I feel like if it was still above the $4 mark, it would be FOMO, but it's still like, like it's kind of calming back down. So maybe like three bucks. Um, it's just, it's really not that bad of a card. Um, like it's always been solid and I would honestly, this is probably actually a really good way to end the video. Uh, so talk about these just like all of them because they all do something Delta. That's the one I was thinking of. Um, this is the one that negates spells. Um, they all kind of do something funky like that, right? Like, that one negates spells. Gamma obviously negates monsters. Uh, Epsilon negates traps. Uh, alpha happens when they're summoned. Uh, and then one of them, I believe it's beta, is when they declare an attack, right? Um, and so, you know, and then Lambda, 
right? You, so, you, so you don't have that restriction. So you don't have to worry about the restriction of um, 10 cents for uh, gold rare lambdas, right? So you don't have to worry about the restriction of they can't have monsters on the board, right? So I think some of the side frame stuff could be really solid. Um, I would even consider picking up copies of Gamma. I don't think Gamma is going to be on the ban list forever. Um, maybe like a format or two, maybe a year or two, but I don't think it's going to be on the format or on the on that ban list forever. Um, but let me know what you guys think. What are some of the best cards under five dollars or less that you were looking at? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you guys click that like button, show your support for the channel, subscribe for more content. Most importantly, well, have a good day.